Hi guys, how y'all doing? Time for Bible. All right, today we are going to be talking about faithfulness and gentleness. Okay, so let's first, let's pray for our day. Pray for our Bible. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you. It's kind of cool outside. Hooray. And I just love that. So Lord, I just pray that you're with us during this time, that when we you know, sing our funny song and we look at Douglas and think he's cute and funny. But to listen to what he has to say, Lord God, that as we grow in you, that we grow in these fruits of the spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All righty. OK, well, let's go through it really quick. All right. So we have Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the spirit is love. Where's love? Love. Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22. So we've got to remember those. We want to grow in these. As we grow, you know, once you become a Christian, that doesn't mean everything is just perfect. Because we now need to grow in the way we need to be. Okay? Yeah, you can be a kind person. And yeah, you can be a, a good person. But if you don't have Jesus in your heart, that doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. Okay. You could be gentle. You can have self-control. You can have these, but you know what? If you those aren't the if you don't have them in the Lord, you don't have them. Okay, because these are gifts from God. All right. So let us sing. Let's sing a song. So you can get up and get your wiggles out. Can you do it? Ta ta. Oh, let's turn it up. I had it so loud yesterday, you wouldn't believe how loud I had it yesterday. Here we go. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. You want to be a coconut? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit is not a banana. banana. The fruit of the spirit is not, not a banana. banana. You want to be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Come on, you guys, make the sand. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Gentleness, gentleness, self-control. Oh. The fruit of the spirit is not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit is not a watermelon. You want to be a watermelon. You might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh. The fruit of the spirit is not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit is not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit is not a lemon. You want to be a lemon? You might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Oh. The fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit is not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit because the fruit is love, love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 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 faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Oh. Love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches. So everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. You want to be a grape. You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit because the fruit is a love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Come on, if an old lady can do this, you can do this too. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Woo! I'm tired. And if I can do it, you can do it that fast. Goodness sakes alive. Of course, I'm out of breath. But, all right. So, we are on, we did kindness, we did goodness, and today we're going to do faithfulness. And I love that faithfulness. And let's see what old Douglas has to say about faithfulness. 
Faithfulness means being loyal. All right. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And today we're going to be continuing in our series on the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And today we're going to be talking about faithfulness. Yeah, and faithfulness just basically means loyalty, being loyal to someone or something, being true to someone or something. And, you know, loyalty is very important to me. I think it's very important for, for me to have loyal friends and for me to be a loyal friend and for me to be a loyal son. You know, I also think it's important to be true to yourself. You know, you might hear that sometimes. I think those are all very important things, but sometimes it can be really hard to kind of balance them. You know, okay, so the other day I was at my house and a friend came over and he, we were playing at the house and then he went in, he had to go to the bathroom and he came back out and he said, he said, Douglas, your mom left her purse in the bathroom and I found this $20. And I was like, wait, what? And he said, yeah, yeah, I found this $20. Douglas, don't tell your mom. I, I know that you're a good, loyal friend. I know you won't tell your mom. And my brain felt like it exploded. Okay, like I, I had no, I didn't know what to do because I wanted to be a loyal friend. You know, he said, he said I was a good friend and a loyal friend. I wouldn't tell my mom if I was a good friend. But you know, it's my mom too. I gotta be, I gotta be a good son. And so I, I thought, I, I felt like I had to betray one of them. I, I felt like I could not be a loyal son and a loyal friend. Like I had to choose one or the other. But I forgot someone very important that you and I should be faithful to, and that is God. We need to be faithful to God first. We need to be loyal to God first. We need to be true to God first. And when I thought about it that way, things became much more clear. Not necessarily more easy, but more clear about what I should do. And so I went to my friend and I told him, I said, you need to give my mom her money back or I need to go tell her. And, you know, he wasn't happy with me. And, you know, he and my mom and I, we, we all we all worked it out and it was messy, but it all worked out in the end. We're still friends and, and, and I know I did the right thing, but I knew that God says that it's not okay to steal. And God also says that it's not okay to lie. And so if my friend asks me to lie about him stealing, well, if I'm loyal to God first, I know that that's not okay. So putting God first can really make things more clear. You know, it can be very hard to balance our loyalties, our loyalty to our friends and our family and, and to ourselves even, you know. But how do, you, how do you balance all of those loyalties? Well, if you are loyal to God first, if you are faithful to God first, everything kind of falls into place. Doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, but you'll know what to do. And you know what? The more faithful that we are to God, the more faithful we'll be to our friends and our family and to ourselves too. Faithfulness is best when you put God first. God would love to help you fill your life with faithfulness. I like him. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. And I, I say really it all hope the time, don't I? Awesome. I love that. Faithfulness is being loyal, isn't it? I like that. You know, and sometimes it's hard to be loyal, isn't it? But just like he said, he, he didn't know who to be loyal to. He didn't want to lose his friend, and he didn't want his mom to get mad. But who do you think of first? God. Oh, well, stealing and, and lying, they're wrong, so that's against God. So that's what you have to think. Who's your loyalty to? It's got to be to God. And if God says, no, that's wrong, then you can't be loyal. And you know what? Our friends are always going to have us. We might end up with some friends that want us to do wrong things. And you've got to be loyal or faithful to God and say, no, I'm not doing that. And, you know, maybe your friends might make fun of you a little, but that's okay because you were faithful to God and God will take care of that. And, you know, he honors that. All right, let's see next. What are we going to do next? We are going to do, let's, let me get small here. Okay, next we have gentleness. I like gentleness. I like gentleness, but I'm telling you when I've got my couple of grandkids and once I sit on the floor, help me, help me because they think that's the time to jump on grandma and they're not gentle at all, at all. So let's see what Douglas has to say about gentleness. All right.
I promise I won't drop you on your head. <laughs> Good to know. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And um, today we're going to be talking about gentleness. Yeah, gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the fruit of the Spirit basically means that if you are living according to the Spirit, then you will have these fruit. So if you're living according to the Spirit, if you're living the way God wants you to, and you, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, then you will be gentle. Now, I learned all about being gentle this weekend because my cousin just had a little baby yeah, and she was so cute. Her name is Abigail. She is adorable. Aww. She's so tiny. She is so little itty bitty. And she's got teeny little toes and teeny, teeny, tiny little fingers. And she's so pretty and quiet. Well, I hear she's not that quiet at home, but she, when she was in my house, she was very, very quiet and very sleepy. And, and oh man, she was so nice. And my brother and I, we each got to hold her. Yeah, but we had to be very very careful with the baby and, and they taught us all the things we had to do when we're holding the baby like we had to hold her we had to hold her head up with our hands so that so that her head wouldn't you know fall too far because her neck isn't very strong yet she's still just a teeny tiny little baby and we had to use our our very quiet voices when she was sleeping because if we were too loud then she might wake up and cry because she she doesn't understand anything yet and so she can get scared really easy and in general, we had to be very, just very careful with her. We had to not, you know, tug on her hand or anything like that. We just held her and look at her and talk to her in, in a small little voice and we could hold her. And man, it was so nice, but we had to be gentle because she is so fragile. You know, how you treat something or someone really kind of really says a whole lot about what you think about that person or that thing. You know what I mean? You know, just because something is fragile doesn't mean you have to be gentle with it. Like, you know, cotton candy is very, very fragile, but it's supposed to be eaten. So I, I'm not careful with cotton candy at all. I just eat it all right up. If I'm careful with cotton candy at all, it's it's not eating too much cotton candy. Because, you know, it's just cotton candy. It's just food. But Abigail, Abigail is so precious and so important. And I want to take very good care of her and and, and not hurt her. Being gentle can be about showing the proper respect to something or someone. Just by being gentle, we can show people that they are important to us and they're important to God too. So for example, with a little baby, you can be very gentle with them because little babies are very precious to God. But even our friends, you know, there are, there are big people. We can, be, we can be gentle with them. You know, there are times where you could say something to someone, you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you need to say something to your friend that might be kind of hard to hear. Like, you know, maybe you could have a friend Maybe they've got a big old piece of broccoli in their teeth and you could be not gentle and be like, hey, you, you've got a big old piece of broccoli in your teeth, you know, in front of everybody and that might embarrass them. Or, you know, the gentle way would be to kind of pull them off to the side and be like, you've got some broccoli in your teeth. And, you know, by being gentle, you're showing that that they are important and that their feelings are important to you. If you care about someone and we should care about everybody because God loves everyone, then you should be gentle with them. Now, that doesn't mean you can't play football. I play football with my friends sometimes, and I tackle them, and that's fine. But if I hurt somebody, I'm going to go, you know, I, I try and help him up and, and ask him if he's okay. Because I want to make sure that my words and my actions show other people that they are valuable. And it's not even about, you know, showing other people that they are fragile. No, you don't have to be like, oh, no, let me get the door for you because you can't get the door for yourself. No, it's, hey, let me get the door for you because you are a special, important person. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would be gentle and show people with your actions that they are important to you and to God. Hey guys, I hope you like. Wow, I loved that. I loved that. To be gentle. Sometimes we're not gentle. Sometimes we're not gentle with our friends, especially when we're in line. You know, we're pushing or we're pulling and we're saying all kinds of things. We need to be gentle with each other. And when he was, I, what I did love is when he said, all these things, when you do it towards others, you're showing them that they are special. Now, you know, I know there's people in the world that you go, mm -hmm, oh, they just bug me so much, but they're special to God. So we need to show that everyone deserves kindness and goodness. And if you are a Christian and you love Jesus, you need to be showing that to them.
because that shows them that God loves them because we are kind of a representative of God and we need to do those things. And I do love what he said. You're respecting each other when you're gentle with each other, you know, instead of yelling at somebody, you know, you guys do that on the playground. You're not playing with me instead of, you know, quietly say, hey, what's going on? Why are we playing with each other? You know, maybe we need to listen and talk to each other and be gentle with our words. And our words are a big deal because words can hurt, can't they? They can. All right, darlings. Well, I hope you loved that. I hope you think about the fruit of the spirit and things maybe we need to work on. There's a few of these I need to work on, you know. So, in fact, we could probably work on all of them. I probably need to work on all of them. Okay, so maybe you should think about what is it you need to work on? Okay, in fact, if you go through this and you think about it and you already know maybe one of the fruits of the spirit you need to work on or that you want more of, you know what? You can email me and tell me or email your teacher and tell her. Okay, my email is white at harvest.org. So if you want to email me and say, Mrs. White, this is my fruit of the spirit I want to work on. I love it. Okay. Cause that's what we're here for to know about more about God. And I love to hear from you guys to tell me how you're doing and what you liked about Bible. All right. All right. My loves, I love you. I hope you all are having a great day. Bye-bye.